good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, when uh, hearing the textbook, the importance of textbook about shaping, influencing uh, uh, perception and relationship uh, uh, between the states. In case of Afghanistan, we have been very uh, fortunate and privileged because our ancient textbook has helped us a lot. And that is, uh, uh, I think, the, uh, one of the earlier reference to India uh, was done by a Persian poet Hafiz yeah. when he says that Shekar Shekan Shawan Tutyon Hint as in Kand Parsika Babangole Mirawat is was talking about the beauty of the Persian uh, words when they travel to India. They overwhelm the parrot of Bengal because of the Persian uh, uh, word are so sweet uh, here. Yeah. Yes. So I think, uh, and if you go to any text in Afghanistan, uh, you know, part of the world, you can find nothing but praising of India here. So at least on that front, we are very okay with the text, but we do not need to yeah. uh, uh, reinvent uh, uh, the text. And I think also I apply to India. Kabuliwala uh, yeah. is a part of uh, Indian folkloric now here, and I think the uh, many Indian colleagues' view of Afghans have been uh, influenced by by reading of the Kabuliwala here. So, uh, thank you very much for uh, our colleague at IDSA for extending an invitation to me to come back here again. I think it's the third time that I have been the given the, the privilege of attending. This time I was a little bit unsure that I would receive invitation because Afghanistan won the football match. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, against India, so say that's, uh, I think maybe that is <laughs> <laughs> a, 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 a factor that I uh, was worried that uh, now we have won the football match. <laughs> yes. And I want to take this opportunity to warn our South uh, uh, Asian neighbor is that the uh, Afghan cricket team also is rising here. So and and uh, we expect in next three to five years, we become a serious players yeah. in South Asia. So. Mine Afghan cricket team here in, in, in coming years. So uh, I would like to uh, speak uh, uh, on the relationship between Afghanistan and Pakistan. I would uh, see from the title of my presentation, I come from a very different background here, is that uh, unlike some of India's neighbors uh, who are complaining about big brother or elder brother or uh, a rising or powerful India, my uh, presentation is on the other way around, and that is uh, our crit critic of India as being a reluctant power here. So <laughs> a reluctant power he here is a so I come uh, from a very uh, a, a totally different uh, background to this uh, concept. I'll just give you two uh, uh, example of two to reinforce the state of relationship that exists between Afghanistan and India. One is that the President Karzai's quotation, uh, uh, recent quotation, which says that India as a developing country is like our brothers who share uh, its bread with us. A piece of bread to, for Afghan children, a piece of bread for uh, Indian children here. That, and that is the true feeling of the Afghans we have towards India. And if there is any opinion poll in Afghanistan, which we have four opinion poll, poll during the last four years, India comes at the top of the most popular, most favored uh, nation among all our neighbor here. And uh, even the, uh, it creates some jealousy among the Afghan government because India is more popular than Afghan governments when it comes <laughs> in the eyes of the, so uh, here. So I think that too shows that the state of the relationship uh, 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 between Afghanistan and India. Uh, I would like to start with the, the reasoning that I provide to our Western partners about uh, signing Afghanistan-India strategic partnership. In my previous capacity, I was a member of the interagency from the Afghan government working on the draft of Afghanistan-India strategic partnership. And some of our Western partners would come to us and ask us why, among all of nations in the world, you choose Af India as you have the first country that you want to sign on a strategic partnership. And uh, we gave them three reasons that why we see India as a strategic partners, uh, not only in our neighborhood, but also uh, in the community of nations. The first reason that uh, uh, we signed a strategic agreement with India uh, uh, is the, the convergence of the value that exists between Afghanistan and India. 
as we all know, India is the largest democracy. India is a good example of uh, a pluralistic, multicultural society here. And Afghanistan, as a young democracy, uh, there's a lot that we can be inspired by model of the India. Afghanistan also happened to be a multi-ethnic uh, society, multi-linguistic, multi-faith here. Therefore, India is a good model for us uh, uh, that to, to be in a sport, have uh, a multicultural society uh, can have a pluralistic uh, and democratic uh, political system. The third is that uh, India is a, a developing nation. India had experienced the trauma of the partitions. We had the trauma of the, the war, invasion, and civil war. Uh, it is a poor country. Uh, it, is, uh, it used to be a rural community, agriculture-based uh, community. All those elements of the Indian society happen to be shared by Afghanistan. So there is a lot that we can learn about uh, India's model of democracy, model, uh, model of the governance. The second reason that uh, uh, we see India as our strategic partner is the convergence of uh, our respective national interests here. For us, uh, terrorism is number one a threat on a daily basis. We are being uh, confronted, threatened by terrorists, and that terrorists that threaten us also threaten India. And the same mindset that uh, a sponsor and nurture terrorism happen to nurture and sponsor terrorism. Uh, in our neighborhood uh, also. We're all advocating for regional cooperation uh, as Afghanistan's, the same apply to India also. So there is a convergence of our national interests. So it's not only the culture, the value that bond us to, uh, together, but also the fact that there are some uh, solid, concrete national security imperative that bonds Afghanistan and India as two sovereign nations. The third uh, uh, primary reason is uh, uh, that our economy is compatible. Uh, we're a complementary uh, economy. That uh, India is a large market for Afghan products, and Afghanistan has a lot of uh, natural resources that can offer uh, to Indians uh, a rising economy here. Afghanistan is gateway to Central Asia. Afghanistan is a gateway to part of the Middle East. The same way that uh, India is a gateway uh, uh, for Afghans' product. So there are three um, uh, reasons of the value, uh, national security interests, and the complementarity of economy that has bonded us together as two uh, uh, strategic partners. And that has been the, the, the reasoning that we have provided to our Western partners about the reason that Afghanistan a, 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 a sign a strategic agreement with India. But we have a major fear of India's failure, that some in neighborhood, some in part of the world are fearful of Indian's powers, but we are fearful of the Indian's failures. That, uh, and that is, we have a uh, based uh, uh, Dr. Professor Muni about the experience shaping the perception. Unfortunately, his, uh, during the last four decades, uh, uh, we have not had a, a good memory experience of India's engagement with Afghanistan. Three presidents of Afghanistan had an excellent relationship with India. Sardar Muhammad Dawood was a great friend of uh, India. Dr. Najib was a great friend of India. And Professor Rabbani was a great friend of India. But India could not protect them against the threat that uh, they were confronted here. Dr. Najib came, were begging India's supports, with Sadrabani the same, and also Sadr Muhammad Dawood. But despite the good intention of the India, uh, Indian's resource, Indian power, were not sufficient to protect uh, Sadr Muhammad Dawood's government, Dr. Najib's government, and Rabbani's government. Now, the fear has been for us that whether this time it will be different all history repeat itself yet. The same forces, the same mindset that toppled Rabbani's government, Dr. Najib governments, and Sardar Muhammad Dawood government is once again threatening President Karzai's government. Yes. And uh, the big question that we have in Kabul, whether this time um, India will be different, whether India this time um, will protect us against the same forces, the same minus that uh, uh, are trying to topple uh, the, our constitutional order uh, or not. So that is the main uh, uh, issue that we are contemplating among ourselves in, in, in Kabul. And I have seen a, 
a sample or manifestation of that uh, reluctance that I would like to very briefly uh, share with you of why uh, uh, we fear that India's may not be able to protect us again for the first time here. The first manifestation of that reluctance is the vocabulary that has been used by Indian's establishment to describe Afghanistan-India relationship. That up to 2010, the vocabulary was a, a developmental partnership between Afghanistan and India. And a strategic partnership was a taboo word in the uh, uh, establishment and the strategic uh, community of India here. And even despite the fact that we have signed a strategic partnership with India, uh, still there is reluctance to fully implement that partnership because one component of that partnership is security cooperation between Afghanistan and India. And as someone who were very advocating for a strategic partnership with India, I was very disappointed that when uh, our request to have a stronger uh, defense security cooperation between Afghanistan and India was received uh, coldly uh, by, de by Delhi here. Uh, uh, as I said this to my Indian uh, uh, colleagues, you have developmental partnership with any countries in, in Africa. But Afghanistan is not an African nation or a Latin American uh, uh, nation. It is an important uh, strategic uh, uh, country for you and for the world region. Therefore, your view of Afghanistan must reflect the interest and the need of the two nations here. Yes. And uh, still, I have not been able to understand uh, the, the reason for the reluctance of the Indian establishment to engage with us uh, uh, on the security and defense uh, uh, cooperation. Afghanistan is a sovereign nation, and Afghan government is in the independent and a sovereign government. Th therefore, it is uh, as well as India. Therefore, defense cooperation is between two legitimate constitutional order of Afghanistan and India. And uh, any reluctance and doubts, I need to be told the reason uh, uh, for that, yes. Uh, one of uh, my Afghan colleagues uh, compared, uh, 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 if I can share this one, that. Uh, having a strategic partnership without security defense cooperation is, loving, is like having um, uh, a girlfriend, but not to have able to have full enjoyment of that relationship here, so, yeah, uh, uh, which some of you may have experience in your uh, use. And that is, I think, the, uh, uh, the, the question that we have, uh, that, that the reason for why uh, Delhi is reluctant to have a defense security cooperation uh, with Afghanistan. So I must emphasize that we are not asking for deployment of Indian troops on Afghan soil. We have a, a functioning army in, in Afghanistan which are learning to defend our nation here. Uh, so it's not about deployment of Indian troops to Afghanistan. It's about more equipment, uh, 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 better training uh, and consultation uh, on the security and defense matter here. The second observation that I have uh, about the Indians' uh, uh, Afghanistan relationship that, that uh, often it is not an independent policy uh, when it comes to Afghanistan. Is Pakistan factors uh, shape to large extent the Afghanistan-India relationship? Is the U.S. factors uh, uh, matters uh, uh, here? And uh, India's engagement with other uh, powers also influence uh, uh, India's Afghan policy. Therefore, I have not seen always an independent Indian policy uh, uh, respect of uh, Pakistani sensitivity, a respect of Western wishes, or respect of other uh, partner here. The third uh, uh, factors that I have observed is, uh, which seems now heading to listen to our colleague from Bangladesh and Nepal, is this socialization gap that exists between Afghanistan and India here. It's almost a one-way street that, uh, 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 that uh, Afghans, uh, politician, Afghan academic, Afghan journalists, Afghan travelers come on a regular basis to India, uh, uh, unlike the Indians who r hardly they go to Afghanistan here. Uh, Afghanistan here. Uh, with uh, a colleague from Nepal, uh, I fully concur with him uh, that, that there is almost zero, not zero is not correct, uh, rare interaction of Indians, expert community, journalists, uh, uh, 
uh, uh, coming to Afghanistan and visit Afghanistan, unlike uh, Afghans who come on a regular basis to Afghanistan. As we speak, there is no one single Indian journalist based uh, in, in Kabul, whereas Afghanistan has one journalist based in Delhi here. So there is a huge socialization gap uh, 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 when it comes to India's view and interaction uh, with Afghanistan. The other observation is that, uh, uh, is that it somehow uh, an obsession and appeasement of Pakistan uh, when it comes to uh, India's here. That I think uh, uh, there's a time for all of us uh, to move on that uh, I think uh, this obsession with Pakistan that whatever Pakistan does says or whatever Pakistan says, we have to listen, we have to we take into account has reached a degree of obsession. And that obsession, in many cases, when it, if I can uh, use my, uh, 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 there's opportunity uh, described, I shared this with the Indian government that this appeasement of Pakistan has not helped. Has not helped Afghanistan, has not helped India and certainly has not helped the people of uh, of Pakistan here. So I think that uh, Pakistan uh, uh, needs to be confronted by the decision that it makes as a sovereign nation here. And I think we have to uh, treat Pakistan as adult. And whatever it does, Pakistan needs to be confronted with what he does. And therefore, uh, appeasement of Pakistan uh, uh, has not been uh, help anyone. And I don't think that will continue to be the case. In uh, trying to understand the Pakistan uh, the Indians' uh, uh, reluctance, I have identified five probably reasons for, uh, for that reluctance. The first reason is that this uh, Gandhian's legacy of nonviolence uh, approach, uh, which is an integral part of Indians' uh, uh, national uh, uh, psyche and national characters. But Gandhian's legacy uh, 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 I think it, inf as I understood him, emphasized uh, principles. And uh, Gandhi was not afraid of confronting the difficult I issue here. So this uh, Gandhian uh, uh, legacy has resulted in a kind of, uh, uh, as some of uh, my Indian colleagues describe, a strategic autonomy. A strategic autonomy that the, uh, the ability to, uh, to work independently here. But that uh, Gandhian's legacy, uh, strategic autonomy, is, uh, and somehow an inherent difficulty with force has made the, uh, one reason is that for the Indians' uh, reluctance here. The second uh, probably reason is that India is evolving and a rising powers. Is a rising power, and uh, it is in the process of uh, transition to become a full-fledged uh, 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 a global power. And we have been unfortunate to be caught in that transition period because of this uh, rising power often are not very predictable. And uh, often uh, they are reluctant, uh, sometimes they overdo, sometimes underdo, because it is the nature of in transition uh, that uh, uh, does not uh, provide the predictability here. So I think the third re probably reason is a kind of a trust deficiency. A trust deficiency, that trust deficiency can uh, be a deficiency uh, tr about India's own capacities, that Indians are not fully confident or not fully assertive about their own capacity to, 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 to behave uh, assertively on the international uh, stage here. So I can see there is a kind of internal doubt about Indians' uh, capability. And part of that trust efficiency is the trust efficiency in the Afghan leadership, in the future of Af Afghanistan here. And Afghan government, has, Afghan government is partly responsible because often a statement and some of our policy that are made in Kabul uh, 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 does not enforce a, a trust you know, in external relationship here. So there's an important uh, trust efficiency about the future of Afghanistan, about the trustworthiness of Afghanistan to be uh, as Indian uh, uh, partners. Another reason is the resource constraints, that uh, 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 there is a lot of demand from India, from neighborhood, from uh, other developing nations, and uh, certainly India does, uh, does not have the resources to, to, to satisfy all demands here. 
And the other reason is the institutional deficiency of the uh, Indian bureaucracy here, here is that I think uh, uh, I have uh, said this to uh, a colleague from Nepal. I have uh, over breakfast, Indian diplomats are the most hard hardworking and efficient diplomat I have, s I have worked uh, with them. Uh, uh, they are excellent diplomat in their communication, in their drafting skills, in their diplomatic skills. But the way that MEA uh, uh, has been uh, a structure is not compatible with the dynamic world of 21st century. It is somehow a, st a static uh, bureaucracy. Bureaucracy by nature, they are static, but when it comes to foreign policy of the rising power, I think uh, uh, one hopes to see a more dynamic, more adaptable uh, bureaucracy in, 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 in India here. So that are the five probably reasons here. And of the way forward, uh, I just want to uh, 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 mention three factors, is about the trust building. Trust building, that means that uh, uh, I want to see more uh, uh, assertive, more confident India uh, here is that please uh, trust yourself. Uh, you are a great powers. You have been a great civilization for many, many uh, centuries, and you continue to do because, therefore, that doubt, that uncertainty are not justified uh, here. And that also uh, implied that trust in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, although we defeat you in football and we might defeat you in cricket. Uh, but on other field, we remain your friends. Uh, uh, we, we were not. Yeah, so there is a new Afghanistan which uh, uh, continue uh, our, uh, our past by uh, being and becoming uh, your a stronger uh, friend here. And if I the second uh, uh, observation that is about the regional initiative here is that here. So I think uh, uh, now for those who follow Afghanistan, Turkey has taken uh, responsibility of the Istanbul process or heart of Asia. I wish that was India, because India is just next door, and India is more capable of playing that uh, uh, coordinating regional efforts uh, uh, on Afghanistan. With the exception of Pakistan, everyone respect India's uh, 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 rule as uh, coordinating the regional efforts on Afghanistan. And the last, which I would like to see, is a more engagement with the United States. The uh, United States is in a difficult uh, 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 situation right now. Uh, there is a crisis of identity in Washington when it comes to uh, Washington's uh, regional and global uh, uh, objective. And I think uh, India can help Washington's to have a better relationship, better policy in South Asia here. And that, in the context of Afghanistan, uh, working more for uh, utilizing Afghanistan, India, uh, and United States for a lateral process. And on that note, I thank you for your listening.